The award is selected by the school principal and staff. The award includes a portfolio with a formal certificate of recognition for the student and a display plaque for the school. I've been presenting this award at Westwood High School since 2001. This is the 21st year that I'm presenting this award. Uh, and I'd like to read the previous award winners because I know that many of you know them. I know the board members know many of them as well. Uh, each of them are outstanding students in their own right, and they're all very successful now. Uh, so uh, it kind of puts a contact in context the awardee this evening. So the first awardee was John Tendo in 2001, and Daniel Jerram, Jessica Bachner, uh, Alexandra Glazer, Walter Joseph, John Garland, Chris Murphy, Tara Keegan, Gabe Mena, Warren Saunders, Evan McLaughlin, Amanda Parola, Jessica Postestivo, Katie Kalish, Alina Kalfayan, Brian Kim, who just graduated from West Point, by the way, Camila uh, Butel and Sophia Butel, Hannah Kim, Robert Lomer, and Isabel Gray. So this year's winner is Marta Dostrowska, and I'll ask her to come up while I talk a little bit about her accomplishments. So Marta, come on up. So, uh, Marta kind of typifies what we're looking for this award. She's an exceptional student athlete in the school and a leader. Uh, she's in the top 10% of her class and is a member of the English and History Honor Societies. She's also a member and president of the National Honor Society. Uh, last year, she took three AP classes as a junior. And I got fours and fives on all those tests, congratulations. You know, this year, she's taking four more. Uh, it's one of the things we like to see in students in high school is taking AP classes. Uh, you know, those who don't know, uh, AP classes are college-level classes. They get credit for those classes that they take them in high school at most colleges. So yeah, it's a tremendous extra effort that's required to take those classes in high school. Uh, Mark is also a three-season varsity uh, participant, varsity athlete. Uh, she participates in cross-country, in winter track, as well as spring track. Um, and is a distance runner. I can't run for anything, so, so that's great. Uh, she's co-captain of the debate team at the high school and volunteers a significant amount of hours for the church uh, uh, throughout the, the entire year. A couple interesting things about uh, Marta that I think you guys might be interested in. First of all, she's fluent in Polish, so that's what we see. Looking forward to doing triathlons in college. So, for those who don't know what a triathlon is, you have to be a pretty decent athlete to be a triathlete. And she's thinking about pursuing a career in politics or law. So I'd like to congratulate Mark. I'll read the certificate. So Dwight D. Eisenhower Leadership Award, awarded for excellence in leadership, character, academics, athletics, community service, and citizenship. Marta Ostrowski, congratulations. Eisenhower Leadership Award sponsored by the West Point Society of New Jersey and whereas each year the high school selects candidates in their junior year to receive the award who exhibit exceptional performance and potential in the areas of academics, athletics, community service, good citizenship and leadership and whereas the Westwood Regional School District would like to recognize Marta Bistrowska, 12th, uh, 12th grade student for earning the Eisenhower Leadership Award. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Westwood Regional Board of Education hereby congratulates Marta for this accomplishment, directs the Secretary to include this resolution in the official minutes of the Board of Education, and directs the Superintendent of Schools to present the student with a suitable certificate of recognition. Congratulations, Marta. Oh, oh, 
So my Eagle Cup Jack was the Township of Washington Veterans Memorial, uh, located next to the Township Library. And so for my project, I conducted two fundraisers. The first was a spaghetti dinner fundraiser, and the second was the buy, a, buy a brick fundraiser. Um, that allowed people the opportunity to purchase personalized and great bricks uh, to honor loved ones or simply show support uh, for veterans. And in total, I raised over $30,000. And for my project, I installed the uh, seat height wall where people can sit and reflect over the lake. In front of it is the brick patio with uh, over 351 engraved brick pavers. And the, uh, there's flags for each of the military uh, armed forces.
Matthew Escobar, Allison Ferner, Erica Fradkoff, Tyler Downer, Isla Gula, Jennifer Hoyles. Joshua Kim, Kaylee Clavish, Sophie Lamontwakes, Megan O'Malley, Madhusha Palampati. Ryan Quigley, Stacy Singer, Connor Stapleton, Andrew Unkelin, Sami Wadi, and Bianca Wertheim for earning the honor of AP Scholar, which recognizes exemplary college level achievement on the Advanced Placement Program exams. And whereas the College Board annually grants the academic distinction of AP Scholar with honors to students who receive an average score of at least 3.25 on all AP exams taken, and scores of three or higher on four or more of these exams. And whereas that the Westwood Regional School District Board of Education does hereby commend Salvatore Caporelli, Danielle Davies, Matthew DeMarco, Christopher Eager, Kayla Umbrali, Olivia Larson, <laughs> Tegan Park, Isabel Reed, for earning the honor of AP Scholar with honor which recognizes exemplary college level achievement on advanced placement program exams, and whereas the College Board annually grants the academic distinction of AP Scholar with distinction to students who receive an average score of at least 3.5 on all AP exams taken, and scores of three or higher on five or more of these exams. Wow. Whereas, at the Western Regional School District Board of Education does hereby commend Tatiana Butel, Marcus Chima, Ashley Francis, Claudia Hastings, Abigail Hill, Kayla Jarsky.
Armen Karakashian, Megan Odell, Emily Recchia, Reeve Schneider, Gabriella Tavaroni, Hannah Vo, Andrew Zeeland, for earning the honor of AP Scholar with distinction, which recognizes exemplary college level achievement on advanced placement program exams. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Westwood Regional Board of Education hereby congratulates these students for their accomplishments, directs the Secretary to include this resolution in the official minutes of the Board of Education, and directs the Superintendent of Schools to present the student with a suitable certificate of recognition. Congratulations to all of you. I am completely amazed by every single one. So congratulations.
numbers and just report into our record tonight so that we, we have it uh, on record and we're in compliance with the New Jersey Department of Education requirements. Moving on tonight, I would like to welcome our two new student representatives to the board, Jay Stickel and Kaylee Clappish. I'm sure your family members are very proud to see you up here, and we are excited to hear your monthly reports. Welcome. Washington School, big topic for everybody. I want to acknowledge the flood in the Washington School basement and all of the work that it went into addressing that problem safely moving students into our various schools. I want to start with the Township Fire Department Chief Kevin Zidko and all of the first responders who came out at 4 in the morning on September 2nd. You kindly assisted with pumping out the basement until it had been emptied. I know it was a long night for the first responders and I thank each and every one of them. We also had a tremendous amount of support from our parents in the Washington School PSO. Their kind words of encouragement really helped a lot of us feel better about the situation. I also want to acknowledge my administrative team. We quickly set up a war group on Friday, September 3rd, and it was all hands on deck. Everyone pitched in to help, and that too was a nice feeling. Keith Rosado and Mario Cofini continue to work hard on all aspects of the restoration. Mrs. Caliento has been outstanding throughout this entire process, and she got very little rest over Labor Day weekend because there was so much to do in a short amount of time. She, sure, she made sure everything was ready for the teachers and the students. Speaking of the teachers and the students, I want to thank them too for their flexibility and willingness to just roll with the situation. Finally, I want to extend my appreciation to the Board of Education for their patience and unwavering support during this time. That concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Boyer. In the interest of time, I'm going to shorten my superintendent's report, okay? And, and just... Well, I'm well, not the superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shorten my board president's report. Thank you. Old habits die hard. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to add to Dr. Mortimer's comments and just say thank you, Dr. Mortimer. Dr. Mortimer is a gracious and humble leader who will not assign credit to herself, but we have a lot to be thankful for. And I just want to thank you very much, in addition to all the individuals that you mentioned. Uh, and I'm going to reserve my further comments for uh, letters to the public, which you should expect to receive in the next several days, with just regarding some board initiatives like surveys that are coming out on, on, on video broadcasting um, versus um, live streaming and on our, uh, our superintendent search. And that will conclude my report for tonight. Thank you. Okay. This is a district report. So I have a bunch of stuff on here, uh, but uh, Dr. Mortimer had sent out a recent uh, release to everyone. I'll just touch uh, on some of it, um, you know, so uh, a lot of the work that's happening at Washington School is temporary work so that we can get in. Uh, we have temporary uh, electrical panels, temporary boilers coming in, into, into play. The uh, working with the town, uh, contractors, uh, buildings and grounds, and, and again, all the administrative staff within the district. Um, we, we've gotten permission from the town to, to set up these temporary structures so that we can then continue. Uh, to, to finalize what needs to be done. A lot of the work cannot be completed in a time frame that would allow us to get uh, students in the building. Uh, so the, uh, this temporary um, setup allows us to do it. Um, so the, the electrical panel, we, we, we have this temporary break where we're going to be, have to rebuild the whole system. So it's going to take some engineering and and waiting for parts to come in. So uh, the uh, the uh, hot water system that will be permanent. That's probably the only thing that's permanent. We're we'll get that's coming in on Monday. Um, the boiler te again, temporary boiler until the boiler is fixed and parts are replaced. That will be in place. Uh, the temporary boiler is an enclosed seat container that will be on. 
the blacktop outside uh, and piped in through the building. So um, we'll put a, a construction fence around it to, to secure it, but you're not going to see, it's not going to be a hot boiler out there that someone can go and touch it. It's going to be enclosed within, uh, and it will be running off of natural gas. So they're going to pipe into our, our the natural gas, the uh, PSCG line that we have. So we won't have any uh, diesel fumes or other fumes, and don't have to worry about delivery of fuel. Um, the, the boilers, that, that project set to begin on Monday uh, and completed by Thursday. Or starting this weekend, they're, they're getting all the paperwork getting um, mobilizing and uh, will be on site on, on Monday. And everything it will be set to be completed on Thursday. Uh, as uh, Dr. Mortimer mentioned in her email this, this uh, evening, uh, we're, we're looking for the October 12th uh, start in First day of school at Washington School. So, everyone, fingers crossed. Um, and I'll just touch quickly. I know we were a little late, so uh, security vestibules. I have an update meeting with the contractor tomorrow to review the open items. We have some interior doors at Washington and Berkeley that are on back order. Um, the glass transaction windows uh, uh, for the uh, office staff. Uh, it is still pending. We have floor mats uh, that are still pending, and uh, the ceiling tiles at the high school. We have to, we have temporary tile, tiles outside, but that delivery is coming tomorrow. Um, the electrical audit. Uh, it, we're, we're engineers are still working on it. Uh, obviously, we our hand or our card has been uh, uh, thrown to us with the Washington School, so we'll be fast tracking that particular audit to get what we need. Um, when we build, rebuild the electrical panel, we're gonna rebuild it with our future needs in mind. Um, they, uh, I, mean, I was told they can also redesign it to be able to be upgraded with new power that will be required uh, from PSNG, but it can be toned down, so I, we don't have that. Currently, there's not enough power at, at Washington to upgrade anything, so um, we can build a new system that will allow us to increase the, the compa load capacity coming into the building, um, but have that design now and ready for future. Um, that requires a lot of uh, work, uh, logistical planning with PSEJ itself, since we have to upgrade the outdoor transformer that supplies the power to the, to, to the building. So it's, it's not a job that happens overnight. I'm told transformers from PSNG right now are on a six to nine month lead time. So, but uh, we will we are continuing doing the audit. We will have, uh, like, as I said, uh, the report uh, late November, early December. And we will determine our needs for our budget planning for the upcoming school. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rosado. Student Representative's Report. I'll start off with the report from the elementary schools. Um, our elementary schools have been emulating teamwork, kindness, and positivity since the school year began. While they face the challenges of Washington School being closed, the administration, teachers, and staff have stopped at nothing to ensure all elementary students are in-person learning and provided an authentic start to the school year. While some of the plans continue to be refined, the elementary schools are thrilled to report a successful ex execution. They are excited to serve all children with a normal school experience focusing on academic, social, and emotional learning opportunities. They are proud to report the only things flooding their schools are safety, happiness, and a love of learning. The middle school is off to a great start. Students and staff are excited for the start of a more normal school year. Back to school night last night was a success, with many parents logging in to virtually meet their students, teachers, and get an overview of each class. There's a lot of excitement about our small fall sports with volleyball now in its traditional season and the first season for our soccer teams. There are also starting competitions now, and we're looking forward to a great season. Clubs and activities are also getting underway with interest games. 
the Tech Trials tomorrow, that virtual club fair scheduled the first week in October. Moving on to high school academics. High school students are glad to be back in school for in-person learning five days a week. Seniors have begun the college admissions process with help from their teachers, administration, administrators, and guidance counselors. On Tuesday evening, many seniors attended the senior college program hosted by the guidance department to familiarize themselves with the college admissions process. Admissions representatives from several colleges visited our school this week to meet with juniors and seniors, and many more will be visiting in the coming weeks. September 15th to October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month. The high school media specialist, Mr. Director, is collecting artifacts such as hats, flags, books, etc., to put on display in the media center. Mrs. Kaufman's AP and Honors English classes have completed their interview projects modeled after the book It's Complicated, The American Teenager by photojournalist Robin Bowman. Students partnered up and asked one another introspective questions using a voice recording. They then transcribed the interview into a Word document and learned how to edit their material to preserve the unique voice of their subject through syntax, punctuation, and stru structural stylistic choices. All the Western's fall sports teams have started their seasons on the right Recording wins across the first few weeks of the season. The girls' tennis team is much improved this year as they won all 15 of their matches at the Common Invitational Tournament to take home first place. They are off to a 4 3 start with their most recent win over Verdun. Senior nights will be game this week and throughout the next couple of weeks. Most notably, over 30 of our seniors will be right past tomorrow night at the football game as we honor band, cheerleading, and football. The Whittington players held their auditions for the fall play last Wednesday. All casting decisions have been made and rehearsals started on Monday. They will be putting on the play Hard Town by Thornton Wilder from November 11th through 13th. The Westwood Marching Band's halftime show for this year is the music of Bruno Mars, featuring songs Uptown Funk, Treasure, and Runaway Baby. They will be performing at the North Jersey Band Festival at Montclair State University on October 24th. Lastly, the band and choir classes are very happy to be back fully in person making music again. The annual club fair has been moved to Monday, September 27th due to inclement weather. Students will have the opportunity to learn about the 30 plus clubs Westwood has to offer. The academic decathlon and debate team have both already resumed meeting in preparation for their upcoming virtual competitions. The student council election process is underway. Petitions and speeches were due last Friday for all students running for one of the class officer positions. Campaigning has begun and the class officer elections will be held next Tuesday, September 28th. Good luck to all candidates. That concludes our report. Okay, thank you both. And once again, welcome to the dais. And thank you for your service. All right, moving on to committee reports, uh, policy and governance. Uh, Mr. Other Dad is actually not here. Do we have someone who? Okay. Um, let me um, actually, I, I would like to address that.
for about three or four years now. Uh, we had some proposed new ranges of uh, class sizes coming from uh, policy and uh, the curriculum committee and the finance committee looked over. Um, the recommendation is to just slightly adjust, well, just to give you some background because you're not looking at what I'm looking at. Um, there are proposed numbers for minimum size, optimal size, and maximum size for each of the K to five grade levels. Um, it, the, for K one two, the, the suggestion from curriculum was minimum of 15, optimal being 18, maximum of 20, which is a, a significant decrease in what's, what's been happening uh, over the years. Grades three, four, and five were a minimum of 18, optimal 22, max 25. The main difference was that K1 and 2, the, the value was dropped from uh, the 1822 25 to 15 18 20. Uh, after discussion uh, with, uh, with Dr. Mortimer, Dr. Mortimer, Mr. Rosado, Mr. Caffini, and uh, the Finance Committee, the Finance Facilities Committee thought it would be best to go a little bit further with the grades 3, 4, 5, keep the minimum 18, optimal down to 21, max to 24. Uh, to strive and to strive for that optimal classroom level. Now, we're, it's obviously just a recommendation. On what we're trying to do what's best for the students, but of course, the administration has to look into what that would mean in terms of facilities, budgeting, uh, and have to incorporate the most recent demographic study, which we were uh, we obtained in June of 2020. Um, that, of course, is pending what's happening in the township with. Uh, certain building projects, which there's been updates in them, even in the last 24 hours. So I'm sure this will be another topic for our next uh, finance facility. So that's that's, that's going to keep going. Um, but it's something that is always on the forefront of our minds. Moving on, goal four is commission the administration to facilitate external safety and security audit and study. Um, so there's the proposals out there to get some security audits for the, the current operations of the district. The conclusion of the recommendation is to review the proposals once they're received and pre present them back to the Finance Committee. Uh, at some point, that's going to be disseminated to the full board, but it's going to start with the Finance Committee. In the, the topic of Class 3 officers came up uh, as an item of discussion as well. Uh, we, we talked about some of the, uh, the goals, uh, some more details about Class 3 officers, what alternative options there would be, um, what other ramifications on budgeting and staffing and those kinds of things. Uh, and the recommendation is that there should be a presentation to the public to explain Class 3 officers, uh, and also then survey the public on the needs and wants of Class 3 officers, if that should be, you know, uh, how they should be employed in the district. Um, and that survey is something that will come down the road. Let's talk about salary guide for our aides. Um, there's a conversation about the steps of the guide versus years of service of the guide. It's really more of a, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. It was a, it was a topic for a couple of meetings already, uh, multiple previous agenda items. Uh, so the, the, the guide will stay as steps. And just to reiterate that it was a one-time adjustment based on years of service. So people are maxed out at the top step. It, it, it allows more flexibility and rewarding the longer tenured, lowercase t, of course, tenured, longer employed aides in, in the district so that they don't cap out sort We also discussed the use of facilities by outside organizations. So um, this is a big change from a year ago where we just work having outside organizations in due to COVID. So uh, the conclusion recommendation is to offer use of facilities under current circumstances that will be evaluated due to COVID restrictions. Uh, additional fees will be incurred if cleaning is needed due to COVID. Uh, weekend, weekend functions, uh, the district will charge a fee for additional custodial services as well. So that's, that's the recommendation and we can discuss further as a full board if needed. Uh, that's, that was pretty much the topic we discussed. And as if we didn't cover enough in that meeting, uh, I like to say that was only about a 90 minute meeting, but it was pretty, it was pretty impressive how much we went through. <laughs> um, we talked about flexible boundaries for kindergarten placements, another hot topic in the industry. Uh, it will be discussed during whole business today with the full board, but that's one of those things that we should talk about as a full board. 
the next committee meeting is scheduled for October 13th, and that is my report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Grossmeyer. Why don't we just continue down the list and we'll go with the curriculum and instruction this summer. Hi. So we do not have, uh, I don't have any report for you since our last meeting. The curriculum committee is meeting again on October 18th at 4 o'clock. Um, but I did want to follow up on my last report because it was quite a lengthy report. Um, I had introduced to, to the public some new controversial health topics that are going to be um, implemented in our, all of our schools. Um, but I wanted to let you know that Dr. Mormer is working on, with her administration, they're working on an opt-out option for our parents um, that's going to be communicated to the public um, sometime in October when it's completed. Um, they will be sending a letter to all the parents and all the community um, outlining all the new standards. Um, prior to any of those being implemented. So none of that is going to be, is going to begin or start um, prior to parents getting that notification. So I just wanted to update you on that. And that concludes my report for tonight. Thank you, Ms. Simler. And we'll move on now to negotiations with Ms. Hanson. No report. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, we will, we will move back to policy and governance. Fortunately, I was at the meeting and I do have the uh, minutes in front of me. So just to give you a general overview of that meeting, uh, we opened our meeting on um, September 13th with the discussion about existing policies and regulations. Uh, the conversation originated at the board table and then it was deferred, uh, sent to the policy committee for further um, further work and, and with, with the request that it would then report back to the full board of education. And so, and so we were particularly focused on policies 5120, and for the public's sake, if you're not familiar with 5120, that has to do with the assignment of students, and we're talking specifically about the assignment of students to school buildings in this particular circumstance. Uh, policy 5120 also has a regulation that governs the way that assignment occurs. And then we also discussed policy 8110, which is about attendance areas. And so we actually examined those two policies in combination because we believe strongly that uh, they are, they are, they are, um, they have a lot to do with the same issue that has arisen from year to year. And in an effort to resolve that issue and come up with a plan that perhaps would serve families, particularly students, better, we would, we would look at that in combination. And so the result of that, com that conversation was to eliminate the uh, the regulation that goes along with 5120. And the reason for that is that the policy 8110, which is attendance areas, would supersede 5120. <clears throat> so in other words, the administration would have to do a thorough implementation of 8110 before referring to 5120. And so that, that we, we recognized as a policy committee that that would no longer, there would, uh, how can I say, with that implementation, there would, there would no longer be a need for the regulation that, that goes along with policy 5120. So now what does that actually mean in terms of substance? So um, the conversation at the board level started, had, had to do with the assignment of students to buildings. So for instance, if you lived in, in, uh, in, in, in Westwood and you, were, and you are somewhere in the middle of, of, of Brookside and Berkeley schools, there's what's called a, a flexible boundary, or a flexible, a ball, flexible boundary zone. And, and that boundary zone could change from time to time uh, and could shift from time to time, but that, not without a thorough uh, study by the administration and a recommendation to the board in a timely manner. But the way it would work out is that with the elimination of the regulation of, of 5120, students would no longer be placed based on a first come, first serve basis. They would be based on an effort to keep them in their neighborhoods. And so, for instance, if you can picture it, if you had Berkeley and Brookside, with the flexible boundary in the middle, if there were an abundance of students in one school, and they had to be, and, and, and some of the students needed to be relocated to another school because the sections here are too large, the sections here could accommodate those students, you would go to your flexible boundary, which, right, in theory and quite practically, is close enough to both schools where theoretically a child could remain in a neighborhood 
as opposed to a child who's all the way over here, the two schools are here, and now that child is right here because mom and dad registered them three days later that the student who is staying. When there's, like I said, clearly this, this, this zone right here would, would, would satisfy the definition of being in a neighborhood for either school. So we actually, uh, we, and we asked Mr. Rosado to go back and please modify the diagram that serves Washington Township, which, 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 which lies, um, I can't, well actually it's much more in between now than it did prior to his revision, uh, in between Washington School and George School. Um, and there were issues in both towns. Mr. Rosado did modify that drawing, and, um, and um, as a result, I think we have two very healthy scenarios now in Washington Township and in uh, Westwood, meaning that we have a, uh, a plan that probably serves, uh, that's probably served, that actually absolutely serves students better when it comes to being able to maintain their, 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 their locations or remain in their neighborhoods. And to attend, attend what we could consider reasonably consider neighborhood schools. So as you can so so if we're go if we're doing that thoroughly exhaustive implementation of 8110, you can see now that there would be no need for the regulation for 5120, which basically spelled out a first come, first serve application. Okay? Um, so the committee members agreed to abolish regulation 5120. They suggested additional wording, noting the above in red, and I'll just I'll just read you some of the additional language so you can get a sense. So, um, the superintendent may assign a student to a school other than the designated, uh, other than, desi than that designated by the attendance area, yet within a flexible boundary area, when such an exception is justified by circumstances and or is in the best interest of the student. So these, these are exceptions to the rule. In order to maintain consistent class size among four elementary schools, uh, that, that, would be, that would be an example. Parents slash guardians will be notified uh, of kindergarten school assignments on or around May 15th of each year. The guarantee of a flexible boundary placement expires annually on May 15th, as the superintendent may need to place a new kindergarten student outside the regular attendance area. This policy will supersede, will supersede policy 5120 for building placement, unless all provisions in 8110 are thoroughly exhausted and or extenuating circumstances prevail, in which case the administration may need to refer to policy 5120. But again, there is no longer a regulation that's going to Okay. Well, what, what's the word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. This, 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 right. <laughs> All right. Um, in terms of uh, follow-up for our August 9th policy committee meeting, uh, we reviewed policy alert number uh, 223 and policy alert number 224. And um, no action is needed on that at this time. Uh, I believe they're included. For uh, first reading. Okay. Uh, we, and then we also reviewed policy stress as a uh, current policy alert. Uh, actually, let me, let me get more uh, for that one. Um, we use a favor of putting these policies on, on the September agenda for the first reading. And then finally, uh, there was a policy review for Governor's extend, uh, Executive Order uh, 253. And, um, which is off the agenda. Uh, stress estimates to develop the following policy to address the vaccination and testing requirements of the Executive Order 253. Uh, we added that to the Federal Board of Education agenda for one reading only and to have, have that in effect for the 21 22 school year. Um, and that basically concludes the report for the uh, September 13 meeting. Uh, and as far as the next meeting, I believe the committee is still.
race and line hold of the rights of the other of other of other individuals are speaking. Specifically, comments regarding personnel matters are discouraged and cannot be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the state of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by members of the public. If a matter concerning a district staff member is in the interest of, of concern to, to a resident, the matter should be referred uh, to the responsible building principal, the superintendent of schools, or the board of education, either by telephone, letter, or email. Although the board may not respond to items raised during uh, the public forum, all public comments will be considered, may be discussed, uh, may be discussed tonight under the appropriate agenda items or new business at this meeting, uh, at, or, or at subsequent meetings under the old business, uh, under old business, uh, or during the board, uh, or, or during board committee meetings, if that is appropriate. Each speaker's statement will be limited to five minutes in duration. The public forum will be limited to one hour in duration. Okay. Would anyone like to?
else like to speak? Joe McAllister, 367 Wilson Hennepin, Washington Township. Uh, I just uh, did not come prepared to speak, but when I see what's up here on the stage and when I see how quickly we're getting repairs and taking care of Washington Township, and as an educator myself, seeing how the back to school night was handled last night, I just got to say I am nothing but impressed with the faculty, staff, and administration of this district right now. Um, you know, looking at back school night uh, model for the middle school last night, you know, these, students, these teachers are going through these eight minute summarized blocks the entire year, back to back after a full day of school, you know, you can, you know, obviously a slightly more complex situation than being in person. Um, but every person that we saw speaking about our daughter's classes spoke with, you know, energy and vigor. These are people who I am sure look at the situation here, must be exhausted by everything they're doing, but they still bring their AA to the uh, table, and I just want to thank all of them for their service to this district and to our children especially. And I'm going to finish writing my address. I'll listen to them. Thank you. 
else like to speak?
Ms. Clark, would you please move uh, policy and governance items A through D? I'd like to make a motion to move to move uh, policy. Just a. agenda. Oh, up. policy a. agenda A through D. Sorry to spring on. Sorry. <laughs> Second. Second. Discussion. Okay. Roll call, Mr. Rosado. Mrs. Colombo. Yes. Mr. Gershmeyer. Yes. Mrs. Hamlin. Yes. Mr. Pontillo? Uh, for items A1, B, C, and D, yes. With respect to policy item A2, policy P1648.13, school employee vaccination requirements. Uh, I'd like to make a statement uh, prior to casting my vote. And I think that uh, this blanket policy comes out of Executive Order 253. But uh, there should be some exceptions to the policy uh, and also the executive order. Uh, while I understand the need for safety and healthy schools and employees, I also understand that people have a fundamental right to privacy free from intrusion from the government. With many unknowns about COVID-19, the vaccinations have a long-term effect on all people. And the knowledge that people uh, may have health issues that could be exacerbated by receiving the vaccine and can't good conscience vote to mandate an employee to do something with their body. Um, I think the state has not considered the burden that's going to place on all the districts in the state uh, to do this testing and uh, whether or not employees will be out of work and the costs associated with that. So this is another example of New Jersey and their unfunded mandates. Uh, I don't want to go against the board. I don't want to go against the work with Dr. Mortimer. Uh, I know she's done some problem solving in the area of the, uh, the employee testing and stuff like that. But in good conscience, I can't agree to require vaccines for COVID-19 from district employees. So therefore, I'm going to stay. Mrs. Sembler? Some of these directives seem to be conflicting with one another, 
as well as telling people the rationale behind why they must get vaccinated, I believe flies in the face of reason. As such, I lack the faith that the state has provided a basis for this necessity. Therefore, I find this requirement to be an intrusion on personal, individual personal liberty. I will, I will abstain. Dr. Romano? Yes. Motion carried. All right, um, could I ask, um, this is simple, would, would you please move personnel items A through Y? Sure. Sure. Sure.
Okay. Mrs. Colvo? Yes. Mr. Gershwin? Yes. Mrs. Hannah? Yes. Mr. Pontillo? Yes. Mrs. Seppel? Yes. Mr. Sneed? Yes. Dr. Romano? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, finance and facilities, Mr. Gershwin, would you please move items A through R? Okay, we did that. I think we just did that one, sorry. Go ahead, please. You can tell, like, I don't know if you still call it right for us. There's no money on your mind. Please don't lose faith, I know I'm just, uh, right now, I'm sure my house is going to go. You know, having family. All right. All right. Curriculum and programs, this is simpler. I don't think we have any items this evening. Okay, let's move to old business. We have a new office in the Tempted Zone for kindergarten placement. Okay, so we'll open that discussion of old business. So at our last <coughs>
and you want to standardize those, and you want parents to have access to them, um, you, you, you could put those in your policy manual and attach them to a policy or, 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 or a, or a, or a, um, a um, uh, regulation as a form. The piece I want to speak about is the fourth piece, which, which is the exhibit. So what I'm wondering is, um, might we consider attaching the two diagrams that Mr. Rosado creates for us as exhibits to policy 8110? Um, I, I think there's value in that because the, the policy itself will drive uh, annual review by the administration and, 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 and presentation to the board with ample time. If if, if a change is, is, is necessary. So I, I just feel like those documents are important enough that we might include those as exhibits and attach them as so they become official documents to, to that policy. Ms. Yeah, it kind of goes with the discussion we had um, regarding the fact that it would also show up on our website under where the realtors access information which also the public to look at. Yes. So that would work perfectly in there because we want to make sure that this information is readily available they weren't having to dig all over to find it. So yeah, no, I think that's great. We should that have those maps right by where the policies that, that refer to it. And so, and so, that, so we would have to have a discussion with Strauss estimators. You know, I mean, the last conversation that I had with him was, hey, can we, because right now, if I'm not mistaken, the electronic resource accommodates policies and regulations, but I'm not sure that it accommodates forms and exhibits yet. Who manages our policy, our, our the Strauss estimate? Manual for the district. Is, 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 is it Mrs. Uh, Suarez? Mrs. Garage, yeah, okay. So we, so we can probably find out whether or not they can do that. And if not, we can always just, we could ask them to scan it in as part of the uh, policy thing. So they could attach it to the policy. Because they, exactly, that's exactly what I was thinking. For anyone in it, especially realtors or parents who are considering buying the, the district, that it's up there and it's attached to that policy so they can't miss it because. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite a, it's quite a, um, it's quite a shift in, in terms of, yeah, so, okay. So do we all, are we all comfortable with that? Is that? Yeah. If, they, if the skinning, I mean, have to be a high quality skinning. Well, I mean, I mean, right. I mean, is there a way to, I don't know, the policy or the site that you try in? Is there a lot of hyperlinks to just have a store, store else on the well, uh, well, website and just, you know, you just jump to it in the reference? We can, we can look into how right, exactly. Well, we'll, 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 we
forward to the next uh, agenda and retro back to uh, um, back. I guess everyone understand the, the, the concept that, uh, that was discussed in the plans. Just so we're clear, anybody that has nine years of service or more would go to level nine. Eight years of service, they would go to eight. Seven years of service would have said, and that's a one time only adjustment across the board. Yes, that's what yeah, we, that was. This, what was this. But nine's not mutually exclusive, so nine or beyond. Correct. Be nine and above. So if you have 15 years, right. nine years, you have to the same level. Eight is eight, seven is seven, six is six. And then after that, it just, people just naturally progress up from there. Correct. Okay. All in favor of it? Just show me. Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll add that uh, in the personnel section. We'll make those adjustments to those individuals that are affected. Um, and you'll see uh, a revised salary for them in the next update. There, there's no need to move on the uh, salary guide because it's spelled out uh, as such.
Okay, thank you. Well said. Um, the only question I have is, have, have you spoken to high school administration about this? Um, we have not. Um, this, these emails are sent directly to us. And that's okay. It's, it's a learning experience. Great. So, so just, just, I mean, certainly this could come to the board table. Uh, but but we, do, we do have a complaint policy, and then by no means, I, mean, I always feel like complaint is too strong a word, but that, that's usually what's associated with the policy. It's basically, it's basically a chain of communication slash command. And, and so what's, what would be important for, for the students to know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But go ahead. I was thinking the same thing you're saying. Okay, okay, so yeah, so I, I just, just as a matter of policy, I'm, I'm speaking to it, not as an administrator, but, but just as a policy matter. And we do have a policy in place for that, and I'll make sure that we get that to you. And if you would, if you would refer them to that policy, I would appreciate that. And please understand, it's not being, uh, the, the, the board is not uh, shirking any responsibility. It's not kicking the can. It's that just out of respect for the, 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 the level, and it's actually two levels before board, would be school administration. And then, if, and then if they're not satisfied at the school administration level, then they would go to the central office most likely the superintendent's office or, or her designate. And then, again, if dissatisfied, it would then come to the Board of Education. So please, by all means, our student representatives, share these things with us. But in terms of action, it would just be more appropriate if they went through those channels. And also, again, I'll make sure that we get that, that policy to you know, so you can share that with them. All right, thank you. Thank you. On, on that note, I just want to say I do appreciate um, the feedback because that is something that we have been looking at is that this is a new schedule that was put into effect it's only starting this year. And one of the things that we deliberated um, was the lunch time for the high school students being cut short. So um, I appreciate the feedback. It's something that we're, we're thinking about and looking at and seeing if it's going to work for this year. Um, so thank you. Mr. Sneed? Um, as we found out last night at the Washington Township Planning Board meeting, uh, the Vion project appears to be approved or, or well on its way to being approved. Uh, we got the final, they, they finally gave numbers last night. You're talking about 24 townhouses, three bedrooms each, 42 regular homes, four bedrooms each. That's about 240 bedrooms. Um, I guess my, my ask or, or Question for consideration: Is there it, has there ever been, or is there a willingness for the board to identify or establish a liaison relationship with the planning board? Because this is just one of, of another. You've got the Franklin project coming down the road. Uh, and speaking to friends who do the planning and zoning, I was my question to them today was, well, how quickly does this happen? Uh, his comment was, we could have this thing happen in a couple months, aka this. Before Christmas, he said it could be next May or June. He said his recommendation was to have kind of more formal conversations from board to board just to understand what's going on. He said it, it's something where there's all sorts of different scenarios that could pop. He said what you want to do is be able to have some sort of internal connection or communication going on board to board. So my my off of my my thought for for this group is has this ever been thought of? Has this ever been done? Is this something that we think is, provides value? Um, because, like I said last night, it was the, as far as I can tell, they got final approval. Um, we're talking about a lot of bedrooms, potentially a lot of kids uh, coming in. Uh, and he also suggested that as these homes are built, they will be occupied with families. So it's not, you're not going to be waiting until all 70, all 66 or feet are completed before you're going to have residents moving in. So it, it's just something. I throw out there as a way to kind of have communication board to board um, so we can understand what's coming down the pike. So, so the, so the, the, uh, the suggestion on the table is to create a liaison position, a uh, board member liaison, liaison position between the board and the planning committee? Correct, correct. Have someone or, or somebody act as that communication conduit between us and the planning. And ideally, potentially, probably, it's, I don't believe you need zoning at this point. Because like I say, Franklin Court's coming down the road. That's 44 units as well. So, so um, for the liaison to the planning board. Right. And that would be, the liaison would be to 
to attend meetings? That's a sit-on play. Would it, would it be the sit-on play? No. Or did you have to just to, just to have one communication. And to bring information back to the board. Correct. Correct. Also, but also maybe perhaps to speak that on behalf of the board. That Correct. Way. Correct. Because there was no official voice, and several parents offered comments to say, well, there's one gentleman in the town, and his comment was, well, how is this going to affect the school? And the mayor kind of didn't really offer any concrete because he didn't feel appropriate, which I understand. But it, 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 there, there needs, I think there needs to be some sort of bilateral communication between them and us to understand what's going on and how quickly these things are going to happen. Is it two months? Is it six months? Is it 12 months? I don't know. You're talking about a project that's been out there. As Mr. Ezzelino, the, the town engineer, said, well, this is 20 years of my life that's now come to a close. So it, I, I just think it would behoove us to have some sort of direct conversation with those folks to understand what's going on when it's coming and how quickly we need to be prepared. Mr. Kirschman. Yeah, maybe we can model it after the relationship with the borough. Um, the Westwood Council each year has a board of ed liaison that's, that's part of their council. And for joint conversations like the Berkeley parking situation, a small committee of an ad hoc committee board members would talk with the mayor and that council liaison. So I don't know if that I don't know if the township planning board also has a township council liaison on well, the planning board that might be the connection we need to make. Yes, they would. And then kind of get monthly updates or bi weekly updates on some unofficial ad hoc committee or something. Uh, I think it would be wise to just to model what how we do with West would be perfect to deal with uh, the Vivian on a project in that way. Yeah, having sat on the zoning board, yes, you have to have the, the way legally they're set up. Your, your planning boards and your zoning boards have town officials among them. Um, my worry would be, you know, having a board member go into a meeting and, and you know, bring back information is one thing, but a board member can't be speaking on behalf of the board as to what the ramifications to the board are. You know, the way we work that out is through our, <clears throat> we find out, you know, from the town what's going on, even or from somebody attending a planning board meeting, where somebody board, sorry, <clears throat> would be to then a new demographer's report is, is how we future plan for, as, as you know, and most board, you know, um, I, I just worry, you know. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I'm responsible for that. I used, I used, yeah. I used too strong of a statement. I, I, I don't mean, I, I said speak on behalf of the board, and that's, that's not, that's not at all what I was, what I meant was simply information gathering. So what you would do is ask questions. You know things like that, and again, I'll, I'll strike on behalf of the board. But you are the liaison. You're going to ask questions with the intent of bringing the answers to those questions back to the board of education. But is that are you more comfortable with that statement? I, I understand your discomfort, but on behalf of the board, I get that. Um, that's not at all what I meant. But but you know, could go to the meeting, ask questions, get information, and bring it back to the board of ed. So. I was going to nominate you, Frank. <laughs> I said I was going to nominate you, yeah, but not to give you more on your plate, but at bar, I think maybe two people, you know, like that way if one person can't always go. I, I, I think we actually have someone who's very, very interested in yeah. this. <laughs> so. You'd also need to do that, also in the borough, because there's projects upcoming. You know, in all seriousness, I mean, it's nice, I can only say on the borough side, we see the agendas online. I believe the township as well. So there'll be meetings where no one can need to attend, but there will be meetings where people will based on this. Mr. Pantello? Yeah, I just want to take a, a brief moment to thank Dr. Nordberg and her staff. So um, she was willing to take this position on, and uh, shortly thereafter, she gets hit with the mask mandate and had to go through making a plan for the district on, on masking all the kids coming back to school and, and enhancing our return to school plan. Um, in the midst of all that, she got hit with a natural disaster, um, which was, you know, she didn't have enough on her plate already, you know, that sort of a pile on. Um, then you had to come up with the emergency plan for the remote learning in the event we have to go to that. And on top of all that, still doing your basic job. And, and through all that, the communication with the board has been very timely, it's been very thorough, it's been very effective. Uh, and I've also had the opportunity to deal with Dr. Moore on a different level. And uh, I'd like to say, uh, keep up the good work. You're doing an excellent job for the district. And uh, from the commentary of the public and from what I'm hearing from, from parents around town, uh, they very much appreciate your efforts. So thank you. Mr. Pantello? Yeah, I'm 
Thank you, Mr. Patel. So, so again, just uh, just regarding the liaison conversation, I don't want to violate any, I don't want to violate any other board traditions tonight. I've already so violated one. So, so do we have a protocol in place for? You know, I, I don't see a reason to to, to 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 kick the can or shift this. I mean, we can, I, I'd like to just get at it right now. Do we want a liaison with? Planning board, and if so, perhaps we ask for a volunteer, and, and, and we appoint that person here and now. Again, as long as I'm not violating. So, so, what, so, how are we with? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, so you're all comfortable with me creating that, right? You don't, you know, acting upon my my the right to bestow upon me, blah blah blah. And, um, and, and, then, and then selecting someone? Yeah, I think we should. You okay. should. One from Washington, one from Washington Township, yeah. and the president. Agreed. Yeah. One from Westwood, one from Washington Township, and the board president. Board president. As well. Three. So that'll be three people total. Okay. I think I should have started saying that. Oh, no, I, I mean, I'm sorry, it's Michelle. She was just. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we will not be returning back to the public.